Johnny Dollar. This is Bert Larkin, International Casualty and Life. Oh, hiya, Bert. How are you? I'm afraid I'm a bit of a problem, Dollar. Yeah? Yes, involving some $300,000. Wow. It will have to be distributed very shortly. Oh, well, easy. Bert, just send me a check. Forget the whole thing. <laughs> You're testing, of course. Oh, well, now, how could you say a thing like that? Well, what about this uh, 300 Gs? You expecting a policyholder to kick the bucket? Exactly. Oh, though I wouldn't put it so crudely. Oh, well, maybe expecting him to be knocked off, huh? Oh, no, no, no. His name is Mr. William Makepeace Everly. Yeah? He lives out in the old Piney Wood section. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty well-to-do part of town. Exactly, and Mr. Everly is quite wealthy. Well, he'd have to have something to carry that bigger policy. Exactly. I've just learned from his doctor, Dr. Thatcher, that he has only a very short time to live. Well, just... What am I supposed to do about it? I don't know. You don't know? All I know is that Mr. Everly wants you out to see him immediately. And beyond that, I... Hmm. Hey, uh, Bert, there's something funny about this. I'm inclined to agree with you, Dollar. But will you do it right away? Sure. Why not? But I wonder. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Get the really light refreshment. (laughs) (laughs) This is where I talk, hey? Get the really light refreshment. That's Pepsi-Cola, of course. I just wanted to say be sociable, Charlie. Of course, Kay. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi on the road or at home. It always refreshes without filling. Charlie. Pick up extra cartons now. Pepsi is so delicious, it goes fast. That's why you should keep plenty of Pepsi on hand. Maybe I'd better sing. Be sure to say keep Pepsi handy. Yes, Charlie. But the song says it sociably. Be sociable. Look smart. Keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair. Dare by dare. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi. What Kay means is, get plenty of Pepsi next time you shop. Well, yes. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the International Casualty and Life Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the harried heiress matter. Expense account item one, 485 for a tank full of gas, and I drove to the Everly address at the edge of Piney Woods. That was a beautiful old place in a setting of tall oaks and sycamore trees that spread protectively over and around the rather large frame house with its slate roof, its cupolas and dormers and broad porches. Even before going in, I knew the inside was filled with heavy, overstuffed furniture and velvet draperies, gilded mirrors, that it had a kind of musty smell, perhaps a trace of camphor, and the parlor closed off except for very special occasions. It was, well, it was that kind of place. In answer to my knock, I was met at the door by a man who looked anything but on his last legs. Mr. Dollar? Yeah, that's right. Good. Come in, please. Ah, thanks. But uh, are you Mr... I'm Dr. Thatcher. I'm the one who called you and should... Oh, oh, I see. At Mr. Everly's request. Or I should say at his insistence. Come along, please. He's in his bedroom upstairs. Yeah, sure. I'm afraid he has only a few days to live, Mr. Dollar. Early yesterday, I notified his stepson, Alfred Harker, but I haven't been able to locate his niece, Nancy Everly. And that is what has him upset. That's why he wants to see you. Oh? They're his only living relatives, by the way. Well, uh, just what does he want me to do? Well, uh, suppose I let him tell you. Oh, and although he realizes he hasn't long to live, he has no idea how short his time really is. All right. Please bear that in mind when you talk to him. Yes, sure. And above all, try not to excite him. Now, in here, please. Oh, okay, thanks. Mr. Everly, I have brought Mr. Johnny Dollar. Oh, Oh, isn't that nice? Well, sit uh, sit down here beside my bed, Mr. Dollar. <clears throat> let me uh, let me tell you why I've sent for you. Yes, uh, certainly, sir. 
Well, uh, young Thatcher here doesn't really know what he's talking about, but he seems to think I have only a few months to live. A few months? Of course, I don't believe him. <laughs> Mr. Dollar, I'll probably end up outliving both of you youngsters. That's <laughs> the spirit. Well, I hope you do, sir. But he's given me something to think about. My estate. Uh, what about it, sir? I've willed everything to my niece, Nancy. <laughs> and my insurance automatically goes to her in the will. Or did you tell him that, Thatcher? I thought it better if you did. Yes. Yeah. Well, Dollar, it's not only because she's been kind and loving over the years, but, well, she's had gumption enough to stand on her own feet rather than depend on me for a living. Where is Nancy, Mr. Everly? I don't know. Well, uh, But I want you to find her, Mr. Dollar, and bring her here so that I can see her before I... <laughs> well, now I still don't believe this young sawbones, but I... <laughs> yes, I, uh, I think I understand, sir. And she is your only heir, your only living relative? I told you, Dollar. My only heir... And I want to be sure. I want you to be sure it stays that well, way. Well, I'll do everything I, I can. I want nothing, nothing to go to my stepson, Alfred Harker. I see. Idle, worthless, sponging off me all these years, even forging my name to checks to get my money now and then. That kind, huh? Yes. And if he finds out I'm leaving everything to her, there isn't anything he wouldn't do to... <laughs> Please, take it easy, Mr. Everly. I'm all right. Well, of course, Nancy realizes this about Alfred, doesn't she? No. No. And that's why you must find her. Bring her to me. I'll certainly try, sir. Yes, you must. Please, Mr. Everly, and now you... if can... anything happens to me, you must protect her from him. You must. You... <laughs> Dollar, quickly, hand me that hypo there on the train. Yeah, sure, Doc. Here you are. I was afraid he might get too wrought up over this hole. There. There now. Just relax, Mr. Everly. Relax. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, now he'll sleep for a while. I was afraid he might get too excited. Yeah. And it sure looks like I got my work cut out for me. I'm afraid so. At least this Alfred Harker doesn't know that his stepfather's money, his insurance... I'm be... afraid he does, though. What's that? I, uh, I didn't realize... Realize what? But when I called him and told him Mr. Everly was You died... told him Nancy is the only heir? Yes, and I shouldn't have. <sighs> have you any idea at all where I might start looking for Nancy? No, Dollar, I'm afraid not. But if you don't know and the old man doesn't know, how do I... Oh, great, great. Have a real cigarette. Have a camel. Have a camel cigarette. more these days, but enjoying it less, change to Camels. The Camel blend of caustic tobaccos has never been equal for real smoking satisfaction. Have a real cigarette. Have a Camel! Start to really enjoy smoking again. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Here, Doctor, if nobody knows where Nancy Everly is or how to find out oh, where she Dollar. is. Yeah. Mr. Everly's stepson, Alfred Harker, always kept close tabs on Nancy's whereabouts. Oh, he would. 
Well, what do you mean? Sure. So that if anything happened to the old man, he could start sponging off of her. Now, look, it's yes. important. Well, Mr. Everly said she doesn't know what a rotten character Al is. That's true. Because of his sweetness and light attitude, Mr. Everly never told her. Well, if he had, he wouldn't have to be so worried about what Alfred might try to do to her to get the estate. Very true. Unless I can get to Nancy first, she'll be a sitting duck for him. If only I hadn't told Alfred he's not included in the Well, you didn't. That's that. Yet, if Mr. Everly's will specifies that Nancy's to be the sole heir... Oh, you never heard of a will being broken? Well, yes. Okay. Where can I find Alfred? Well, he lives in a rooming house on the other side of town. Yeah, I'll uh, write the address down for you. Yeah, do that. And uh, remember, Dollar, he's not only bad, but clever. So be careful. Here, remember that. Sure. You uh, looking for that young Mr. Harker, mister? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, he ain't there. I'm the building super. And where can I find him? Don't ask me. All I know is he packed a couple of bags yesterday morning and left. All right, look. Look here. I'm a private investigator. My credentials. Okay. If you'll just let me get into Harker's apartment. Well, oh, here. Here, this five spot be of any use to you? Oh, now, you know better than to ask that, young fella. It was pretty obvious Al Harker had left in a hurry. The clothes he hadn't packed were strewn all over the place. But luck was with me. On a desk, I found an A-line timetable. One of the flights to Los Angeles had a check mark beside it. More important, I found the address of Nancy Everly, an address in Philadelphia, PA. I drove to the airport and spent item two, 12.55, on a plane to Philadelphia. Then item three, six and a quarter, for a cab to Nancy's address. It was a neat little apartment in the section they call Upper Derby. But instead of finding Nancy there... Why, no, Johnny Dollar. I'm Mary Ann Hooper. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, now, Miss Hooper... But uh, I, I know Nancy Everly from the office where we work together. Well, where can I find her, so Mr. It, when she moved out of town, I agreed to take over the lease on this nice apartment. Uh, Won't you come in? She moved out of town, you say? Mm-hmm. Where? Well, she was transferred. She was a copywriter, you know. Uh, for whom? The uh, name of the company you work for? Hardin, Carmen, and Fisher. Oh, yeah, the ad agency. Mm-hmm. And they sent Nancy out to their Los Angeles office L-A. just a few weeks ago. Now, Alfred must have found that out. Why don't you come in just a minute, Johnny? It's awful chilly out here. Hey, listen, here. do you have her address in L.A.? Well, no, but maybe at the office. All right, oh, okay, thanks. Thanks Johnny, very much. Johnny, has she done something wrong? No, she hasn't. What? It was late, and I hadn't had any dinner, but I took a cab out to International Airport. That's another six and a quarter, and there, unfortunately, had plenty of time to eat before I could take the 1.30 a.m. plane for the West Coast. The meal is item five, three dollars even. Item six, 16160 plane fare to L.A. Item seven, another six and a quarter, taxi into the office of Hardin, Carmen, and Fisher, where I had to wait for the joint to open up. Then I talked to the receptionist. No, Mr. Dollar, Nancy isn't here. Oh, uh, then I'll go out and grab some breakfast. She won't be in at all and, uh, today. Oh, when does she come in if you... What did you say? I said she isn't coming in today. Why not? Well, I don't know. Oh, then give me her address. Yes, certainly. It's 1308 Pandora Avenue out in West Los Angeles. Okay, thanks a lot. So Nancy was in L.A. Al Harker had come to L.A. And Al knew he'd get none of Mr. Everly's estate unless... Unless what? Oh, I hadn't the least idea. But I knew that he was clever, which meant there was no time to waste in getting hold of Nancy. Item 8, 350 for a cab to 1308 Pandora, and there from the landlord... Oh, believe me, this was the one I hadn't anticipated. Oh, she lives here, all right, but she's near now. Oh, uh, she left on idea? a little trip a few hours ago. A trip, did you say? That's right. She and a real nice-looking young man. Do you know his name, who he is? No, I can't say that I do, but a real charming, nice-looking Well, look, do you know where they went? Man. Oh, I sure do. Well, where? She said they were going over to Las Vegas. Vegas? And you know something? I think they're going over there to get married. Ouch. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos. Corn chips, if not polite, to smack your lips. But you can't help it with Fritos. Corn chips, munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos. Corn chips. That's right, Fritos corn chips. So crisp and light, there's contentment in every munch. 
Serve them at outdoor parties, as a snack or with dips. Fritos corn chips are so good with cold drinks, everyone will want to munch a bunch. Fritos have a flavor no other kind of chip can match. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos corn chips. Fritos are golden chips of corn just made to munch. Keep Fritos corn chips on hand for the perfect warm weather between meal treat. Tuck a bag in every lunch, picnic or otherwise. Serve them with sandwiches, salads, all summer meals. Fritos corn chips are full of good, crisp, refreshing flavor. F-R-I-T-O-S, Fritos Corn Chips. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos Corn Chips. Now, back to yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the harried heiress matter. Expense account item 9, 70 cents for a phone call to Las Vegas, Nevada to that well-known license bureau. Johnny Dollar, the special investigator? Yeah, that's right. Listen. Well, sir, this is a real privilege talking to you this way. Hey, listen, there's a young couple on the way over there to get married. Happens all the time, Johnny. Oh, yeah, sure. Especially here. Yeah, now listen. Their names are Nancy Everly and Alfred Harker. You want me to arrange something special for them to help them on their way? No, no. Somehow you've got to keep them from getting married. Well, now, unless you've got some legal reason, Johnny, some kind of court order or Oh, something. by the time I went through that, they could be married and gone. Yes, I guess that's true. So look, you got to stall them. Somehow you got to keep that pair waiting. Well, now, Johnny, I'd certainly like to do you the favor. And do it. But unless I got some legal cause, you see, it works like Well, this. look, just you stall them off until I get there. I'll make it worth your while. Now, Johnny, that sounds like bribery. All right, call it anything you like. Just hold them up until I can get over there to Vegas. But on what excuse, John? Anything, anything you can think of, but do it. I'm on my way. Alfred Harker's plan to get hold of the Everly fortune was all too obvious. All he had to do was marry Nancy and he'd have it automatically. Item 10, 750 for a fast taxi out to Lockheed Air Terminal in Burbank. And how come we didn't pick up a lot of tickets for speeding along the way? I'll never know. That driver really earned his tip. I'd have 11, $200 even for a charter flight to Las Vegas. And I knew the kids had had plenty of time to get there ahead of me. I'd have 12, a dollar for a cab into the license bureau. And I'm sure honored to meet you, Johnny. Yeah, and you say they've already been here and gone, huh? Now, I tried to stall them here just as long as I could. Oh, yeah. But after a while, I'm afraid it got to be kind of obvious. Okay. But I tried all that. Okay, right. okay, here. Here, thanks. This is for your trouble. Now, Johnny, I wouldn't think of... Now, look, I'll that, double it if you can tell me where... You. you see, I, I'm a real fan of that radio program of yours that... Where they went from here to get married? Yes. Johnny, in this town... <laughs> yeah, well, they left here on foot, so it must have been somewhere in the neighborhood. Okay. So, uh, would you like a list of the places around here where they can... Uh, <laughs> commit matrimony? Yeah, let me have it, will you? Item 13 is the 10 spot I accidentally left on the counter for him. Then I started checking every place in the area, every person who could seal the bonds of matrimony. Churches, marriage chapels, justices of the peace, even ordinary-looking private homes that were on the list. Hey, you know something? A lot of weddings take place in Vegas. I almost got thrown out of a couple I barged in on, and then finally... Why these two uh, excuse not me, folks. In holy matrimony. Speak now or forever hold your excuse peace. Excuse me, please. Yeah, just wait, young man. I'll take care of your wedding in just a minute. Yeah, well, yeah, look. Let's finish, finish the ceremony, please. Yes, of course. Now, do you, Alfred Harker, take this woman? No. No, he doesn't. I beg your pardon, young man. Yes, what is this? Who's this man, Alfred? Well, I'm sure I don't know. All right, now listen to me, Nancy, and listen to me Who very carefully. Are you? The only reason Al Harker is rushing you into this marriage is to get his hands on your money. What? My money? That's right. <laughs> now, look here. But you're wrong, because I have no money. That is not enough. Well, but... maybe not now, Nancy, but you will have within the next few days when your uncle dies. Uncle Bill is dying? Ask Alfred here. He knows it. What in the world makes you think a thing like that? Because Dr. Thatcher told you he is, and told me that he told you. William Everly's dying, all right, and you know it. Alfred. Alfred, why didn't quiet, you... quiet, darling. Just let me handle it. And this. Al, you know something else that Nancy doesn't know? That Mr. Everly isn't leaving you one cent. That everything goes to her. 
So the quickest, surest way to get your hands on that estate is to marry her. Now, look Alfred, here. this isn't true, is it? I can explain everything, Nancy. Oh, I'm sure you could, Al. But you won't need to. You just listen to me, Mr. Now, Mr. Nancy. If what you say is true, why did Uncle Bill write to Alfred and beg him to marry me? That it's the one thing he's always hoped for. Who told you that? I saw the letter myself. Alfred showed it to me. Oh, do you have that letter, Nancy? Alfred? Well, no, I threw it away. Yeah, you would. So not to have any evidence lying around. Evidence? A forgery. Like the checks your darling Alfred forged over the years. Alfred, no, that isn't true, is it, Alfred? It's true, all right. It's true. Oh, oh, dear, no. this man or anybody else is going to stop this wedding. Come here, Nancy. Young man, what Now, are look, you? pulling that gun is about the most foolish thing you could possibly do, Alfred. Is it? Alfred, listen. No, Nancy. Now, now let go of me. Please, Alfred, listen what to me. Fool, I say. Oh. Just hang on to him, Nancy. Oh. I'll kill you. Oh. Sure. I'm... I'm sorry, Nancy. Terribly sorry. Well, pulling his gun was a big mistake. Yeah, the people there in Vegas, the police just don't go for that sort of thing. As for any charges the company may care to make against him, well, that's up to the legal department. The main thing is to keep him away from her permanently. Incidentally, I managed to get her home to see her uncle before he died. Expense account total, including the trip back to Hartford, and for Nancy, too, of course, seventy-six four twenty-five. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Hi, this is Dennis James with a longtime favorite. Yes, the longtime favorites are usually the best, aren't they? And one favorite folks have relied on over the years is Kellogg's All Brand since 1919. America's favorite natural laxative cereal. Kellogg's All Bran is the safe, gentle way to overcome irregularity caused by lack of bulk in your diet. It tastes good, too, and it, it never gets mushy in milk. There's only one All Bran, Kellogg's All Bran. So relieve constipation the way millions do with Kellogg's All Bran. A double L hyphen B R A N. Yes, you're so right to stay regular with Kellogg's All Bran. Try it, okay? Okay. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Well, first, let me shout a word of welcome to the network to station KFBK in Sacramento, California. Glad to have you with us. Next week, I'm called in to help a small company that's involved in the race to conquer outer space. And I'm sure you know there are plenty of people in this world who go to any lengths to put a crimp on this project. But in this case, the man behind all the trouble turns out to be a real surprise. The case I'll tell you about is called the Flask of Death Matter. And believe me, there's lots of excitement and suspense. So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Gene Tatum, Lillian Bayef, Marvin Miller, Russell Thorson, Bart Robinson, Forrest Lewis, Sam Edwards, and Harry Bartell. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wall speaking. Suspense follows on the CBS radio network. You know, Dooley, I've been reading up on hypnosis. Come here and let me try it on you. I'm an officer of the law and don't approve of making a man divulge his secrets. However, I'll stand by in case there's criminology involved. I just want to clear up some of his problems, Officer Suds. I haven't got any problems. I'm the soul of contentment. 
Maybe that's your trouble. You're too contented. Lie down, Dooley. You're going to sleep. I feel so good. He's under my influence. Now, little tyke, get up. Go straight to the beer of your choice. Astounding. He's heading for Utica Club. Cause Utica Club will still take the trouble to age beer the natural way. Utica Club, you see. <laughs> 